All right, great. Well, then okay. we're going to jump. We're going to jump right into it and get started. Sure. Um, for all of you uh, that are on today, I do want to just uh, thank you for taking a few minutes to to join us uh, for this Medicare workshop that we're going to be going through today. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it very paced for you guys, and there is a lot of information information to cover. Um, just a little bit about myself. My name is Lance O'Brien. Uh, I've been involved with my wife for Medic in Medicare combined for about 20 years now. Uh, we both work for MediConnect, uh, which is the area's largest independent advisory firm for Medicare, which we'll get into in just a moment. Uh, but my role here at MediConnect is I'm, I'm a manager. My three main job focuses are one, we have a weekly radio show where we educate the public and connect them with important partnerships in the city uh, that's on Saturday mornings, and I participate in that. We do about 10 seminars a month to about 200 people a month, educating them on Medicare and letting them know everything. So basically what we're doing this morning, uh, we actually uh, do that 10 times a month all over the city. And then I train and develop our agent force here. So anybody who's new that joins us, I kind of walk them through the process. I did just admit another individual there. So um, I'll do that as we, as we get going. So that's who I am and what my role is. Obviously, we've got another one here. I'm just going to admit Karen at this point in time. Um, but uh, like I said, this is the presentation we use when we're out and about in the community. So your restrooms and refreshments, I'll let you guys handle that on your own today. Um, we won't direct you anywhere. And then the materials, those, there's materials that we hand out at every one of our events and seminars. Um, but we won't have those for you today. So as far as the presentation itself, uh, generally we're gonna be about 50 minutes to an hour and 10 minutes. And that really depends on the number of questions. Uh, just stopping here to admit someone else at this point in time. So we're gonna be about 50 uh, minutes to an hour and 10 minutes. Our content today, we're gonna look at enrollment periods, which this is when we should make decisions uh, and how to avoid penalties ultimately. We're gonna jump into uh, what is original Medicare part A and B, what do they cost and what do they cover? Then we're gonna look at private insurance options when it comes to Medicare. And then lastly, uh, we're gonna talk about prescription drug coverage and how that works. So basically we're gonna give an overview of Medicare. Um, we may not answer every personal question that you have, but as far as how we're gonna answer questions, cause now we're up to about 10 people uh, in the room. You have a chat feature. Uh, that's available. If you actually just take a minute and type your questions, one of the advisors, Nick Troopy, who's a part of my team that initially set up the contact here with Houston Harbaugh, he is actually going to be available to answer questions. So if you have chat questions, if you're on the phone, because I know we have some of you that are actually are calling in, uh, if you unmute yourself and ask a question, we'll answer it that way. So that'll give you two ways to answer questions or to ask questions today. So again, just a little bit about us. MediConnect is uh, the area's largest independent advisory firm. When it comes to Medicare, we have over 30 advisors that are working with people internally and in the field and walking them through this maze that is Medicare. What independent means to us is we are contracted with every carrier. So we literally work with UPMC, Highmark, Aetna, United Healthcare, Gateway, Humana, Allwell, Amera Health Caritas, which are all companies that provide Medicare coverage here in Western PA. We work with every one of them. That's incredibly important to us because we want to be able to sit down with you and offer you every option. And if we can offer every option, then we can focus on the education piece and making sure you understand how Medicare works and how ultimately it can work for you. Your first decision is going to be the big decision because that's normally when the penalties and things come in like that, but it's not going to be your only decision. You're going to have ongoing need for review as health plans change, as prescription plans change change and as your actual health situation changes. So we offer annual reviews to all of our clients. So we're really big on education and relationship when it comes to Medicare. And there's never a charge in any time for our services. Our compensation comes directly from the carrier. They pay us the same amount. So again, for us at the end of the day, what type of private insurance and what company you go with is totally up to you. Uh, we just wanna get you in a place to make an informed decision and then we help you process 
uh, the paperwork if you choose, and that's how we're compensated. So that's a little bit of an overview of who we are and what we do. So without any further ado, we're going to jump right into it. So as we move to Medicare age, Medicare is the centerpiece or the focal point of our insurance, uh, but there are other considerations. What about prescription drugs, critical illness, inpatient hospitalization, dental vision and hearing? We really specialize in helping you understand all these aspects, but for today's presentation, we're going to focus primarily on that green Medicare puzzle piece for you. So as we get started, let's talk about enrollment periods. And I'll just take a minute again, just to remind you, if, as I'm going through this, you have a question on the enrollment periods. Um, you can actually type it in the chat. If you do want to unmute and ask a question, we'll try to handle some that way also. But let's talk about enrollment periods. There's four when it comes to Medicare. The first one and the most important one for most of our discussion today is the IEP. The I there stands for your initial enrollment period. Your initial enrollment period is a seven month period of time that surrounds when you first get part B. It's very important to understand it that way. Don't think of your initial enrollment period when you turn 65 because some people are gonna elect not to take part B at age 65. So your initial enrollment period is a seven month window of time, three months before the month of and three months after you get your part B insurance. So if you age into Medicare at age 65 and you decide to retire at that point in time, or if you do a comparison between your work insurance and Medicare, and you determine that your Medicare, Medicare is going to be a better option for you, you can get A and B at age 65, and you'll be in your initial enrollment period. If you decide to not get Part A, or sorry, Part B at age 65, and you decide to keep your work insurance, then you won't have to get Part B and you can save your initial enrollment period till later. So let's talk about that a little bit because there's a couple of things that I think are important just from knowing uh, the situation that you guys are, are in. The first one is, is you can defer your Part B at age 65 if you're actively working and getting insurance through your employer. If you're actively working, getting insurance through your employer, you do not have to take Part B at age 65. Most people take Part A at age 65 because there's not a reason for them not to take it except for one, which may apply to some of you that are listening today. If you have an HSA account as your insurance through your employer and you want to continue contributing to that HSA once you turn 65, you want to defer Part A and Part B. So you'd want to defer both of them in that scenario. The reason for that is, is you can no longer contribute to an HSA once you have any part of Medicare, whether it's Part A or B. We see people make this mistake all the time. They'll hear someone say to them, Hey, get part A there, you know, it's free to have it. Just get part A when you turn 65 and they end up having an HSA account. If you do that, you're going to have to pay 25% tax on any of that HSA money that you contribute. And then you're going to have to pay a 6% penalty on top of that. It can get costly. So again, your initial enrollment period is a seven month window of time. That is three months before the month of and, and three months after you get your Part B. You do not have to get Part B if you're going to continue working and you have coverage provided through your work, okay? You would want to defer Part A and B if you have an HSA account. So I'm just kind of recapping for us. So if you have any questions on that, you can type it in the chat and Nick will be able to kind of help you walk through that. Um, but again, as long as you're actively working and getting insurance through your employer, you can defer Part B and you don't have to worry about any penalties. But you should compare your work coverage to Medicare because it's about 50-50 that Medicare is actually going to provide you better coverage than your work uh, insurance, even if you continue being employed. OK, so I spent a little bit more time there uh, just because I know some of the nuances of your firm. So I wanted to kind of get some of that out. But by all means, ask questions if you have them. The second enrollment period 
is the AEP, the A stands for annual enrollment period. It sounds just what it is. October 15th to December 7th of every year, anybody who has any part of Medicare is able to make a decision related to their Medicare. So if you go with a Medicare Advantage plan, which is one of the types of private insurance, you can make a decision at that point in time. If you go with a standalone prescription drug plan, and we'll get into this a little bit more, I do see we have a question in the chat, so we'll get that addressed uh, here for you in just a moment. And I might need, can you see that, Nick? I might need to share permissions for you. You can see it? Okay, great. All righty, so we have that annual enrollment. Anybody who has Medicare of any type uh, in the private insurance sector, they're able to make a decision between that seven week window and it generally goes into effect on January 1st. The third enrollment period, a lot of people are not familiar with it because it's new. It only came out about two years ago. It's the MAOEP. This enrollment period is specifically for people who choose Medicare Advantage plans as their private insurance when it comes to Medicare. From January 1st to March 31st of each year, they'll be able to actually review their Medicare Advantage plan. So for people with Medicare Advantage, they actually get about a five month window to review their coverage every year from October 15th through December 7th. And then again, and people ask me all the time, Lance, why is that? And that's because the Medicare Advantage plans change every year. There's constant change with them. So they want people to have the opportunity to review that. And then the last enrollment period is an SEP. The S there stands for special enrollment. The first three enrollment periods that we reviewed are all based on dates, right? And times, seven months, 15th to the 7th, 1st to the 31st. Special enrollment periods actually apply to life events. So there's 17 different special enrollment periods you can get with Medicare. I'm not going to go over all of them, but a couple of them, just so you know, if you move from one county to another county, Medicare is going to give you a special enrollment period. If you qualify for some kind of assistance through the state, whether it's related to Medicaid or PACE, you would get a special enrollment period. If you're leaving group coverage for the first time, that's a special enrollment period. And just as an aside, with the pandemic going on, because some people have been housebound and have not been leaving their house, FEMA has granted a FEMA exception for people to review their plan outside of those enrollment periods. Like I said, there's 17 of them. We would assist somebody and knowing if they qualified for one of them. So again, that's an overview of enrollment periods. And if you have other questions, you can put them in the chat box. I see we just got another one in. So any questions you have, we'll work with those with you guys today. So let's move on to who can get Medicare. Well, the first thing is in order to qualify for Medicare, you do have to be a legal resident of the United States for five years for at least five years, and it has to be at least the five years prior to going on to Medicare. And then there are a few other things that um, apply. The first one is, is you have to be 65 years of age or older, but you can get Medicare before the age of 65 if you are receiving social security disability for 24 consecutive months, or if you have a diagnosis of end-stage renal disease, which is kidney failure, or ALS, which is Lou Gehrig's disease. So Medicare, most people age in at the age of 65, but you can get it earlier than that. All right, so let's talk about what are we talking about when we're talking about qualifying or aging into Medicare? Well, we're discussing generally original Medicare. The reason part A and B is referred to as original Medicare is because when Medicare first started in 1965, there was only part A and there was only part B. Parts C and D, which we'll talk about in a little bit, didn't come out until 2006. So again, with A and B, I see we have another question too, it looks like. We're gonna get the answer to that for you guys here. So, um, and I'm gonna admit somebody else too to the room. Um, so part A is hospital insurance. That's what it's gonna say on your red, white, and blue card that you can see on the screen. And there's gonna be a date associated when your part A insurance began. Think of part A, not just simply as hospital, but think of it as inpatient coverage. 
because it just doesn't cover a hospital admission. It also covers an admission at a skilled nursing facility, not a nursing home. Medicare does not cover nursing home care whatsoever. But say you have a surgery for hip replacement, you're in the hospital, you're recovering, but you're not ready to go home yet maybe based on the fact that you just need more ongoing care, maybe you have stairs at your house, Medicare is gonna send you to a skilled nursing facility like a Manor Care or a Concordia. That inpatient at the skilled nursing facility is also covered by Part A, as well as inpatient in your own home, home health care, and also um, hospice. So Part A doesn't just call, cover a hospital admission. It covers admission in general in an inpatient setting, whether it's in your home, skilled nursing, the things we just looked at. And then part B on your card is also going to say medical. OK, and that's also going to have a date assigned to it. The date of part A and part B aren't necessarily going to be the same, depending on when you get those certain services. If part A is inpatient, you want to think of part B as outpatient. So this is all of your outpatient services. So your primary care, specialist, blood work, um, physical therapy, durable medical equipment. Part B would also be ambulance. It would be the emergency room. It would be an outpatient surgery like cataracts or hernia, what we refer to as same day surgeries. If it's not an actual admission, it's considered part B medical insurance which is outpatient. And I've just found in all the years that I've been doing this, that part A is inpatient, part B is outpatient. It's the easiest way to kind of remember what these coverages actually cover. So let's talk a little bit more about part A and part B. So part A is premium free as long as you have worked 40 quarters in your lifetime or you're married to someone who did. So that little bit of money that they take out of your check every week that says Medicare, that's actually going to pay your Part A premium. So once you hit that level of 10 years of paying into it, when you turn 65, you don't have a premium for Part A. And this is where people do make the mistake with the HSA. They're like, it's free. Everybody signs up for it. But again, just to go back to what we talked about a couple of minutes ago, if you do have an HSA, you can't contribute to it anymore once you get any part of Medicare, whether it's part A or B, without incurring a penalty. So if you have an HSA, you would want to defer part A if you're going to stay with your work insurance. Okay. If part A is your primary insurance, then you have what we call a nationwide network. What that means is you can go to any doctor or excuse me, any hospital that accepts Medicare or any skilled nursing facility that accepts Medicare. So basically, as long as the facility accepts Medicare and Medicare's primary, you can go there. Okay. Now, what I do always say is it's free to have as long as you've worked that 40 quarters, but it's not free if you use it. Okay. There are going to be costs associated with Part A. So let's talk about them here for a couple of minutes. If you go into the hospital, an inpatient hospital admission, Medicare does the benefit period on a 60-day benefit period for its initial benefit period. So if you go into the hospital for one to 60 days, Medicare is going to pay everything but $1,484. OK, think of it as a big old deductible. That's going to be your responsibility. OK, but it works differently than the deductibles that you're used to on your group health plan, because on your group health plan, you pay the deductible once for the year and you don't have to pay it anymore. Well, the Part A deductible is based off of that 60 day benefit period. Let me give you an example that I think will help it make sense. You go into the hospital for seven days and all you have is Part A as your insurance, right? Medicare is going to pay everything but 1482. That's going to be your responsibility. You're in there for seven days for a stroke, you're discharged, you go back in the next month for the stroke again you don't pay the 1482 again 
because you're still within 60 days. But if you go into the hospital in February for a stroke, seven days, and you get discharged and you go back in in August for the stroke, because you're outside of that 60 day benefit period, it actually starts a new benefit period. The big takeaway from the Part A deductible as it relates to the hospital is you can pay that more than once in a calendar year, okay? So you just want to be aware of that. Well, what happens if your hospital stay stretches beyond 60 days? I wouldn't say that's super common because the average hospital stay in the United States today is five and a half days. But if you do stretch beyond that 60 day period, you actually go into the second benefit tier. And at that point in time, you're going to be responsible for $371 a day for days 61 to 90. Medicare will cover all the other expenses, but that's a daily copay of $371. And then once you get to day 91, it, from day 91 to 150, you're actually responsible for $742 a day if Medicare Part A is your primary and ultimately your only insurance. And here's the big problem with Part A. There's no out-of-pocket maximum. So what that means is if this scenario that I just talked about unfolds in your life, it would actually cost you about $60,000 and you would be responsible to pay the entire amount because there is no maximum out of pocket, okay? So it's free to have, it's not free if you use it and it can become very costly. Same thing applies for skilled nursing. It also has three benefit period, uh, periods. The first 20 days are free, days 21 to 100, is about $186 a day. That's your responsibility. And then once you reach day 101, you're re responsible for the full cost. So again, if in your mind you're trying to say, what is part A? Part A is your inpatient services. It's free to have, but it's not free if you can use it. And it can become costly if you don't have any other insurance to help offset the, Mac, the lack of a max out of pocket. OK, any questions on part A, you can drop them in the chat and uh, we'll answer them for you. So let's move on to part B at this point in time. Part B is not free. Part B does contain a monthly premium. Most people pay one hundred and forty eight dollars and fifty cents for their part B premium. Let's talk about that for a couple minutes. First of all, let's talk about how do I pay for my part B premium? Well, if you're taking your social security, when you go on to Medicare, the government social security is gonna make it very simple. They're gonna just remove that 148.50 right from your check. They like to make con things convenient for you, which is another way of saying they want your money before you get your money, right? So um, if you're taking social security, when you go on Medicare, it comes right out of your social security. If you're not taking Social Security when you go on to Medicare, you're actually going to be billed quarterly for your Part B premium, and you'll send a check into Medicare so, or Social Security. So now let's talk about who doesn't pay $148.50. If most people do, who doesn't? There's two groups of people generally. I'll use married people as uh, an indicator, but we can certainly get you the single individual costs or pricing if that's your situation. But a married couple making less than about $16,000 a year and having less than six, $7,000 in assets, they're going to qualify for state assistance. Some people know or understand that as Medicaid or welfare. If someone makes that amount of money and qualifies for state assistance, the state is actually gonna pay the Part B premium for them. On the other end of the spectrum is people who make more than that. A single individual who has an, uh, uh, an income yearly, adjusted gross income of 88,000 or a married couple that has an income of 176,000, they're going to pay what's called IRMA. It's an acronym, I-R-M-A-A. -A. It stands for Income Related Monthly adjustment amount. Income related monthly adjustment 
amount. And what it basically means is if you make more money when you're working, you have to pay more taxes. If you make more money than Medicare thinks you should, when you go on to Medicare, you have to pay more for your Medicare. Now, here's the one thing I want to make sure you understand, because most people are like, I'm retiring, my income is going to go down. Irma is always based off of a two-year look back, okay? So if you're going to go on to Medicare Part B in 2022, they're actually going to go back and look at your tax return from 2020. It's always a two-year look back. Whatever your adjusted gross income was in 2020, if it's over those benchmarks of 88 for a single or 176 for a married couple, you're going to pay an elevated amount for your Part B. OK, once you get to 2023, they're going to look at your 2021 tax return, 2024, 2022 and so forth. OK, so you can work your way out of an Irma, if you will. Uh, very important to understand this. There's five levels to Irma. You can actually, depending on your income, pay as much as four hundred and seventy five dollars a month for your Part B. OK, you have to be making five hundred thousand uh, dollars to do that as a married couple. So you're making a lot of money at that point in time and you can probably afford it. But it would go into your decision of what health care is the best choice for me. So if you have any questions on Irma or the Part B premium, uh, let us know that and we'll answer them there in the chat. Just like with Part A, if Medicare Part B is your primary insurance, you can go to any doctor uh, that accepts Medicare, okay? So you get a nationwide network. Now there can be a premium penalty for late enrollment. Um, generally that happens when you retire and then you turn 65, but you're on your spouse's insurance um, and they may be retired. Essentially, in order to avoid the penalty, this is going to be the easiest way to understand it. To avoid the penalty, once you reach Medicare age, you have to be actively working and receiving benefits through your employer. If you're not actively working and receiving benefits through your employer over the age of 65, that's when you're going to miss your enrollment period potentially and have to deal with the 10% penalty. OK, I do also want to mention really quickly, if you do qualify for an IRMA penalty, that penalty also applies to Part D as well. So you'll have an elevated cost for not just the Part B premium, but for your Part D costs. OK, so that's a little bit about what you pay every month and how you pay it. So let's talk about how Part B works. Part B has a deductible of $203. That is a yearly deductible. It's not the benefit period deductible we discussed a few minutes ago related to Part A. So you pay that once for the year. Once you've satisfied the Part B deductible, then Medicare pays 80% of Part B charges. You're responsible for 20% of Part B charges. And much like Part A, Part B has no out-of-pocket. You see that there on the screen? What that means is if you have $100,000 in Part B charges, you're going to be responsible for 20%. And honestly, guys, this is the biggest problem with original Medicare is it's medical coverage, but it doesn't give you a parachute. If you have significant health needs and all you have is Part A and B, be, you could have extensive health care costs because of the lack of a max out of pocket. So normally, once people learn that about part A and B, they start asking them themselves the question, how do I limit my out of pocket risk? OK, that's where part C comes in. Now, if someone who worked directly for Part C or for Medicare was talking to you today, I, I don't work directly for Medicare. I represent Medicare and insurance companies, but I don't work for Medicare, okay? Um, if someone was, lost my train of thought because we had a question come in, I apologize for that. Um, we'll get to that question there for you in just a minute. But the big question is when it comes to this is, how do I limit my max out of pocket? How do I limit my out of pocket expense? And again, that is where part C comes in. 
Medicare would tell you Part C is a Medicare Advantage plan. I don't want to explain it to you that way. I want to let you know that Part C is private insurance. You want to think of Part C as private insurance. And what I mean by that is your private insurance is going to help you cover the out-of-pocket expenses as it relates to Part A and B. Okay, so how do I make sure I don't end up paying 60000 for a hospital visit of 150 days? How do I make sure I don't end up with $20,000 of Part B charges? Well, for some people, they may have been a veteran and they qualify for TRICARE or VA benefits. That could be their private insurance. Some people may have work coverage for themselves after they turn 65, after they retire. That's not very common anymore. Once we went from pensions to 401ks, insurance after retirement disappeared for a lot of people. But there are some people that can be your private insurance. For most people though, you're going to choose between the two options on the screen when it comes to your private insurance. You're gonna choose between a Medicare supplement, otherwise known as a Medigap, which is the term I prefer, which I'll tell you why in a couple minutes. And if you go with a Medigap plan, you're also going to get, need to get a standalone Part D plan. The other option would be to choose a Medicare Advantage plan. This is a combination of Part A, B, and D into, in Medicare's I, a C plan. It brings everything together. And honestly, again, for most of you that are listening right now, you're going to choose between one of these two options. Now, the first thing I want to tell you is I do not believe one of these options is better than another. You might call a direct uh, carrier directly and they're going to tell you only about one of these options. And the reason they're only going to tell you about one of these options is they only do one of these options, right? You may talk to a friend or a family member that says, you need to do this. This is the best thing. I truly do not believe a best plan exists. I believe a best plan could exist for you, but you need to understand the options and how they work so you can pick the best option for your situation. So let's talk about these. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to tell you an overarching principle of a Medicare Advantage plan, and then I'm going to give you some pros and cons. And then I'm going to give you an overarching principle of Medigap or Medicare supplement plans, and then the pros and cons. I think this is the easiest way to understand it. So the first thing is, is if you choose a Medicare Advantage plan for your private insurance, the number one thing you need to know is it completely replaces original Medicare. Part A and Part B are no longer primary. Your Medicare Advantage plan is your health insurance that covers you, okay? First question I get when I say that is, well, if my Medicare is replaced, do I still need to have Part A and B? You can't get private insurance when it comes to Medicare without A and B. So you always have to have A and B to get private insurance, okay? And you still have to pay the Part B premium. So even if you take a Medicare Advantage plan and you replace Medicare, you still have to have A and B and you still have to pay for it. So what does that mean that it replaces original Medicare? Well, what it means is the Medicare Advantage plan has to be as good as original Medicare. It can't be any worse than what we looked at a few minutes ago. But it doesn't have to... It, after being as good as Medicare, it can do whatever else it wants after that. It can add things. It can lower copay structures. It has to be as good as it, but after that, it can do anything it wants, okay? So what do people like about these plans? Well, the first thing they like about it is every Medicare Advantage plan has to offer a maximum out-of-pocket. So again, if you remember from five or 10 minutes ago, we said the big problem with part A and part B is there's no maximum out of pocket, okay? Every Medicare Advantage plan has to give you a maximum out of pocket. And you can get that maximum out of pocket for as little as a zero monthly premium. So you can get a Medicare Advantage plan for no monthly premium. Extra coverage with a max out of pocket for no extra money. Now, these Medicare Advantage plans, 
can go all the way up to $302. And there's 46 of them to choose from in Allegheny County. So there's a ton of them to look at. I always make the joke, it's worse than, you know, Baskin Robbins, 31 flavors. How do you pick? You've got 46 Medicare Advantage plans to choose from that range from a zero premium all the way up to $302. What I will tell you is I am a huge believer, and I say this all the time on our radio show, I'm a huge believer that you should never pay more than $50 a month for your Medicare Advantage plan. The value is just not there in spending more, which kind of goes against our normal way of thinking. You get what you pay for, right? If I pay $250, I'm gonna get better coverage. It's not really true when it comes to Advantage plans. $50 or under, and you're going to get really good coverage in the Medicare Advantage space. So people like the fact that they're affordable and they get a parachute or a cap on their health needs for a calendar year. The second thing that people like about them is the copay structure is much better than original Medicare. I said it had to be just as good. Well, generally, the Medicare Advantage plans are way better, honestly. Let's just talk a minute. There's a plan in Allegheny County for about $26. Let me just talk to you a little bit about the copay structure. If you go to a primary care, it's going to be zero. If you go to a specialist, it would be $30. If you get blood work done, it's going to be a zero copay. So again, on original Medicare, you'd have to pay 20% of the cost for those things, where on this plan, you're looking at zero, zero, a little bit of a copay for a specialist. The hospital is monumentally different. Remember when we talked about the hospital before, 150 days on original Medicare would cost you almost $60,000. Well, on this $25 Medicare Advantage plan for $150 next year in Allegheny County, your copay would be $275 for the entire admission. I mean, it's monumentally better. So what people really like about them, they're affordable, max out of pocket, and the copay structure is much better than original Medicare, okay? And then the last thing is that people really like about these that I would say is a pro, and honestly, what I think is the real advantage of the Advantage plans is what I call the Comcast effect. And what I mean by that is if you're familiar with Comcast or even Verizon, if you will, you can get your phone, your internet, and your TV in a bundle. That's how an Advantage plan works. You get your additional coverage for Part A and B. You get your Part D drug coverage, which you need to have for your prescriptions. And you get dental, vision, and hearing and other extra benefits like gym membership over the counter, which can help you in purchasing vitamins at no cost, free transportation, meals when you're discharged from a hospital, you get all of that in the one plan. So again, let's talk about that $25 plan in Allegheny County. Not only do you get the low co-pays for part A and B, but you also get coverage for your prescription drugs that you get at the, the, the pharmacy. In addition to that, that plan gives you $400 um, a year starting next year for eyeglasses. It gives you your routine eye exams at no cost. It gives you $3,000 towards comprehensive dental. It's going to give you $5,000 towards hearing aids. So these Medicare Advantage plans are affordable. They give you a max out of pocket, and they give you a very convenient copay or very affordable copay structure. And people really, really like that about it. So one of the questions they always ask me is how is it possible to get all that extra coverage? Well, remember, you're not on original Medicare anymore, but you're paying for your Medicare. Well, what's Medicare doing with your money? Medicare is actually taking your money and it's sending it to the Advantage plan that you go in. So that zero plan, you're not actually paying zero for it. You're paying at least $148.50. But the honest truth is, is that Medicare will often send three, four, five hundred dollars a month to the Medicare Advantage plan. They're happy to give them that so that you're off of Medicare and you're the responsibility of the Advantage plan. So those are the pros, right? 
affordable, max out of pocket, good copay structure, and you can get extra benefits Medicare doesn't provide. So what are the cons? What do people not like about these plans? Well, the first thing people don't like is because you've replaced Medicare, Medicare is no, no longer primary, which means you can no longer go to any doctor that accepts Medicare. Now you have a network. Whether it's an HMO or a PPO, you have a network of doctors that you have to stay within. Now, if you're traveling and you have an emergency, Medicare med mandates every Medicare Advantage plan to actually give you coverage in an emergency situation, but you wouldn't have full access to every doctor and hospital in the country that accepts Medicare, which for some people who are snowbirds or they like to travel a lot, or they may have significant health conditions and they want access to any provider or hospital, this is a real con for them because they want to be able to go and see the doctors that they want to be able to see. They don't want to be limited in their network. And the second problem with the Advantage plans or something else people don't like about them is remember how I said every Advantage plan has to be as good as Medicare? Well, there's a couple of things on these Advantage plans that are only as good as Medicare. The first one is durable medical equipment. What that is, is if I need a CPAP machine and the supplies, if I am a diabetic that needs a pump or I'm on, I'm on um, I have COPD and I need oxygen, walkers, wheelchairs, durable medical equipment on every plan but one in Allegheny County is going to be the Part B 20% still. So there's some things you're still going to pay the 20% of the cost for. And the durable medical equipment can become somewhat expensive, but that's not the one that I really am concerned about. And I always want to make sure that people know about. Medicare actually differentiates between Part D drugs and Part B drugs. Part D drugs are ones that you go to the drugstore for and you self-administer. Capsules, tablets, insulins, inhalers, those are Part D drugs. They're covered by your Part D plan. Part B drugs are drugs that are given by a doctor or a nurse by injection or infusion. They are covered under Part B. Well, on a Medicare Advantage plan, you would be responsible to pay 20% of injected or infused drugs. There's a lot of examples I could give you, but the one you probably are already thinking about is if you get cancer and you need chemotherapy and your private insurance is a Medicare Advantage plan, you're going to pay 20% of the cost of every single one of those chemo treatments up to the max out of pocket of your plan. So there's the potential still for significant out of pocket cost. On an HMO, the max that an out of pocket can be is $7,500 and $7,550 to be exact. And on a PPO, $11,300. So there can still be a lot of out of pocket costs. So that's Medicare Advantage plan. That's one of the private insurance options you'll have to choose from. It replaces original Medicare. It gives you a max out of pocket, generally at a low monthly premium with a good copay structure, offering you extra benefits that original Medicare does not offer you. But you do have to work within a network and a managed care system, prior authorization, not necessarily referrals. You don't really have to have referrals within a Medicare Advantage plan anymore, but you would have to have prior authorization and things of that nature. And then you could have some costs that were more significant if you have a major health issue. OK, so that's a Medicare Advantage plan. If you have any questions on that, you can uh, type a question in the chat and Nick will help you out. So now let's talk about Medicare supplement plans or Medigap plans. If the number one thing you needed to know about a Medicare Advantage plan was it completely replaced original Medicare, the number one thing you need to know about a Medigap plan is it works with original Medicare. So if you get a Medigap plan, part A and B are gonna be primary and your Medigap plan is going to be secondary. So what do people like about these plans? Well, first and foremost, they get to keep that nationwide network. Because Medicare is primary, they can go to any doctor, 
any facility, any hospital in the country that accepts Medicare. And again, that is very attractive to some people. Think back a couple of years when we had the whole Highmark Allegheny Health Net or the Allegheny Health Network UPMC issue, where if you had this person's insurance, you couldn't go to this person's facility and people were um, frustrated by that. They were concerned about that because they didn't want to lose their doctors. Someone who has Medigap insurance, they don't have to worry about that because UPMC accepts Medicare and Allegheny Health Network accepts Medicare. Medicare. Again, if you have a major health condition and somewhere down the line, the best specialist in the country is at the Mayo Clinic or Cedar sinai or something like that. Medicare's primary. You can go there. You're in network. No issues whatsoever. Okay. And then lastly, um, if you're a snowbird living in Florida or maybe Arizona for four or five months, or you're going to be an RVer, I don't know, but you want to have nationwide access, people love that about it. The second thing that people really like about these plans is there's almost no out of pocket cost other than the monthly premium. You pay a monthly premium and then the Medigap fills the gaps of part A and B. So everything we talked about earlier, you know, the 1482 for the first 60 days in the hospital, the 371 a day, the 742 a day, the 20%. These plans go by letters. You may have heard of them before. Plan N, Plan G, Plan F, things like that. Depending on the letter plan you get, it's going to fill most, if not all of the gaps of part A and B. The most popular or the Cadillac plan right now is a plan G. If you go with a plan G, your only out of pocket expense for A and B services is the part B deductible, which if you remember from a few moments ago is $203. Once you pay that deductible at the beginning of the year, you have no other out of pocket expenses with a plan G for part A and B. So if I get cancer there, they pay for every chemo treatment as long as it's Medicare approved. If I need open heart surgery, if I spend 100, 100 days in the hospital, it is fully covered by the Medigap plan, depending on the letter I choose. So people love these plans from the standpoint, a medical emergency is never gonna become a financial emergency. It's very comprehensive medical coverage. And then the third thing people really like about these plans is that even though they're sold or offered by private insurance companies, these plans are actually standardized by the federal government. The government is the one who actually set up these plans and the private insurance companies can't alter it. So any co company that offers a plan G has to offer the exact same thing that any other plan G company offers. So it gives you really a lot of stability in knowing what your coverage is going to be. And, and people really do appreciate that reality. So those are the pros, nationwide network, almost no out-of-pocket expense beyond the monthly premium for part A and B services and coverage I can count on. It's guaranteed renewable. The only way I can lose my Medicap coverage is if I personally call in to cancel or I start, stop paying my monthly premium. So if those are the pros, what are the cons? Well, the, the first con um, and really the big one is, if you remember a few minutes ago where we said Medicare Advantage is like Comcast, right? It's that bundle effect where I can get dental vision, hearing, drug coverage, all of that in one policy. Medigap plans are not Comcast. I kind of refer to them as Ruth Chris Steakhouse. And if you've ever been to a Ruth Chris, you know that it's a la carte, right? You have a price for the steak, you have a price for the vegetable, you have a price for the starch. That's how Medigap plans work. So your plan G only covers your A and B out-of-pocket expenses that Medicare doesn't cover, but it doesn't cover Part D prescription coverage. So you would have to get a separate standalone prescription drug plan. And one of the mistakes I see people make often is, hey, I don't take drugs. I'm not going to get a drug plan. If you don't have Part D drug coverage within 63 days of going on to Medicare, then you will start accruing a 1% penalty every month that you don't have 
that drug coverage. And that penalty is about 33 cents, 35 cents. So if you go without drug coverage for two years, you could be looking at maybe $8 a month, $10 a month when you go to get drug coverage later. Okay, so you have to purchase a drug plan. And then if you want dental vision and hearing coverage beyond what is medically necessary, because that's all Medicare covers, then you're going to need another policy for dental vision and hearing. So what people don't like about Medigap is you could have higher monthly out of uh, higher monthly premiums. So you're paying more upfront, although you will have less to pay on the back end. But generally, you're going to have those coverages through multiple companies, too, because companies that offer dental and vision, dental vision and hearing don't necessarily cover Medigap plans or drug plans. So you're going to have multiple companies and multiple premiums. And some people, frankly, don't want to pay that much money, especially if they're really healthy. So that's Medigap. That's Medicare Advantage. Here's a little cheat sheet for you. If you got your phone there, you can actually take a screenshot of that if you want, or um, you can take a photo of it. A lot of people find this comparison. Again, I don't believe one of these is right or wrong. One's not better than each other, but you do need to understand how they work so you can decide which one is best for you. Now, there's one other thing that I do need to tell you about Medigap plans and Medicare Advantage plans. When you're in your initial enrollment period, and if you remember what that was from when we first began, your initial enrollment period begins when you first get Part B. In your initial enrollment period, you can get a Medigap plan with no medical underwriting whatsoever. So they accept you regardless of pre-existing conditions and they can't charge you a higher premium. If you don't get the Medigap plan in your initial enrollment period and you want to have that coverage later, you will have to go through medical underwriting and you can be denied that coverage. So basically you get a one-time golden ticket, if you will, when you first get onto Medicare to get that comprehensive, all-inclusive coverage with no underwriting. So normally when I start talking about this, people will ask, well, can you go back and forth? So let me just address that really quickly. It's very easy to go from a Medigap plan to a Medicare Advantage plan. All you have to have is an enrollment period. So essentially there's no underwriting to go from a Medigap to a Medicare Advantage. But if you start with a Medicare Advantage and you wanna to go to a Medigap plan later, then you will have to go through underwriting. If you can pass underwriting, you can get it. If you can't, you'd be stuck in the Medicare Advantage world, okay? So if you have questions on that or want a little bit more information, again, you can put a question in the chat feature and Nick will answer that for you. So that's enrollment periods, penalties, part A and B, their costs and coverage. That's private insurance. We have one more area to cover. We're at about 55 minutes now. We should be done in about uh, 10 minutes, but we do have to take a few minutes and talk about prescription drug coverage because a lot of people, as they get older, start having more prescription needs. Now, every company that offers Part D prescription coverage has to have a formulary, whether they're a standalone prescription drug plan or the prescription coverage is integrated into the Medicare Advantage plan. They have to have a formulary. And then within that formulary, there's going to be a tier structure, much like your group's coverage right now. Tier ones would be your preferred generics, which will have almost no copay. Tier twos would be generics. Tier three, preferred brand names. Tier four, brand names. And tier five, specialty medications. The higher the tier, the higher the copay, okay? Now, one of the questions I get is a lot of times is, well, what if I pick a plan and then in the middle of the year, I get different medications that I didn't have before? What happens then? Well, every Medicare or every Part D plan, whether it's in the Medicare Advantage plan or a standalone, has to cover at least one drug in every therapeutic category, whether it's brand name or generic. So what that means is your drug plan is gonna to have to cover something within the spec of your diagnosis. The question is, is 
does your company cover it the best? That's where yearly reviews and things that we offer as a part of the relationship we build with our clients comes into account. But so formulary tiering structure. In addition to the two ways to get prescription drug plans and the five ways or the five tiers of drug coverage, there's actually four phases of drug coverage. They made it very simple for you guys, right? Two ways to get the plan five tiers, four drug coverages. This slide here is actually somewhat confusing, but it's probably the simplest way we could um, put it on paper to make sense of it. So what I'm gonna do for you guys in this part is I'm actually going to walk through the four stages of drug care or drug coverage, and then I'm gonna give you an example that I think will tie it all together, okay? So the first stage of drug coverage is the deductible. Every Part D plan can charge a deductible of $445, okay? For 2021, it's going up to $485 for 2020, okay? Generally, the deductible is not applied unless you have medications on tiers two, three, four, or five. So if you just take preferred generics like a statin or whatever, you don't have to worry about the deductible. But once the deductible is paid for, you, you go into the next phase, which is the initial coverage phase. Now, in the initial coverage phase, you just pay co-pays for your medication or coinsurance, coinsurance if it's a tier five specialty medication. Well, how do you stay in the initial coverage phase? Well, you're in the initial coverage phase as long as the retail cost of your prescriptions is under $4,130. As long as the retail cost of your medications is below $4,130, you stay in the initial coverage phase. Well, what do we mean when we say retail cost? Is that my copay? No. Retail cost is the cost that the drug manufacturer in conjunction with your health plan in conjunction with the pharmacy, determine your prescription would cost without insurance. It's the retail cost, right? So as long as the retail cost of your drugs is under $4,130, you stay in the initial coverage phase and you pay co-pays for your medications. Once the retail cost of your drugs exceeds $4,130 in a calendar year, you drop into the coverage gap, or you may have heard the phrase that you see on the screen, the donut hole. Once you get into the donut hole, you no longer pay a copay for your insurance or, or um, for your prescriptions. You pay coinsurance for your prescriptions. You now pay 25% of the retail cost of your generic medications and your brand name medications. Okay, so you have an elevation from copays to coinsurance, flat fee to 25%. And you stay in the donut hole till your actual out of pocket costs reach $6,550. I had a question last night at a seminar I was doing in Wexford. So does that mean I just have to go from 4,130 to 6,550? That is not what it means because over here, that's just the retail cost. You could have had a retail cost of $4,130 and only paid $400 in copays. You have to get to $6,550 in copays to get out of the donut hole. And at that time, you'll go into the last phase of drug coverage, which is catastrophic coverage. At that point in time, you'll pay 370 for your generics. 920 for your brand names or 5%, whatever is greater. Okay. So I know that's a lot of numbers. I know we got retail going on. We got actual costs. Let me give you an illustration really quickly and we'll move to wrapping up. My youngest daughter, when she was 15, was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. So she's insulin dependent for the rest of her life. So right now, she takes Lantus every night before she goes to bed and she takes Humalog throughout the day with her meals. She's not on Medicare yet because she's only 20 years old now. But if she was on Medicare, on, on average, 
the retail cost for Lantus on a, a Part D plan is about $550 a month. The retail cost for Humalog is about $450 a month. So in the scenario we just talked about, she would have $1,000 a month of retail cost for her prescriptions. Insulins on most Part D plans are a tier three, and you're going to pay about $35 a month for those. So why, as long as my daughter stays under $4,000 in retail cost, she's gonna pay $70 a month for those two prescriptions. But you know as well as I do, if you're doing the math in your head and following along with me right now, once she hits May, she's gonna exceed that $4,130 number. Once she does, she drops into the donut hole. She's no longer paying $70 copay for her medications. Now she's paying 25% of the retail cost. So now she's paying $250 a month for her two insulins. So there's quite a bit of increase in cost. Now, again, if you're doing math, if you're following everything we're talking about, which I know by now, because I've done hundreds of these events, your brain's probably exploding with all the information we gave you, but she's only paying $250 a month for eight months, right? That's $2,000. She paid $70 a month for the first four months. She's only paid about $2,700 in out-of-pocket expenses. She's not going to get out of the donut hole. Now, one last thing here that's important to know. A couple of years ago, Medicare, quote unquote, closed the donut hole. Well, in my opinion, if they closed the donut hole, they would have eliminated it completely, right? Right. What the closed donut hole means though is now when you're in the donut hole and you're paying 25% of the cost of the retail, the retail cost of your prescriptions, the drug manufacturer has to pay 55% of the cost. So now you have, in my daughter's scenario, you have $800 a month going towards the 6550. So now it's easier to get out of the donut hole than it was in the past. That's the biggest thing you want to know. And actually, I think one of the greatest value adds that we give as a company is we can tell you the actual retail cost of your prescriptions on the health plan you choose at the pharmacy you want to go to down to the penny. So if you're going to have major prescription issues, we can let you know exactly what that would look like on any plan that's available here in Western Pennsylvania. Okay, so if you have questions on prescriptions, you can drop them into the chat feature and we'll answer them. So again, our, our big goal as a company is to help you avoid the potholes. All of us have been in Pittsburgh long enough to know what a pothole is, right? It's gonna make your card thud. I've had my tire pop before. It's basically gonna create problems for you. We wanna help you avoid the potholes. We wanna make sure you're getting the enrollment periods right. You're making decisions when you're supposed to, that you're not incurring penalties on part B or D, that you're not having to pay more or not understand the IRMA. We wanna make sure that you're not having network issues or formulary issues when it comes to your prescription. So we would walk you through this whole process. We do it in an independent, unbiased way. Again, we don't care if you go with Medigap. We don't care if you go with Medicare Advantage. It doesn't matter to us if you uh, are loyal to UPMC or Highmark or Aetna or United Healthcare. That, that stuff is not the important stuff to us. The important stuff to us is do you understand A and B? Do you understand the potential out-of-pocket costs? Do you understand when you can make decisions? Do you understand what a Medicare Advantage plan is and how it works? Do you understand a Medigap? Do you understand part? We want to make sure that we educate you to the place where you can make informed decisions about your health care, looking at the total picture, and then we can assist you in the sign-up process, not just for Medicare, but also for your uh, private insurance plans, whether they're Medicare Advantage plans, Medigap plans, dental vision and hearing, ACA, we assist with all of those things. So what's next? Well, Nick is a contact. You can reach out to uh, Corinne and she'll be able to help you with that. I will give you Nick's main number now. 
And also you could call our direct number or you could go to our website, but Nick's direct line is 412-528-1988. So again, that's Nick who's been answering the questions behind the scenes today is 412-528-1988. He'd be able to sit down with you or do a private Zoom with you because you may have some private questions based on your medications, or your travel habits, things of that nature. Maybe you have questions about your timeline. When should I sign up for things? How do I sign up for things? He'll be able to walk you through all of those issues and make sure that you don't have any potholes or hiccups along the way. So I'm going to stay on here and Nick's going to stay on here just for a few more minutes. If you do have questions, you can put them in the chat. Uh, if you do want to unmute now that we're through the presentation itself, if you want to unmute and ask a question, I'm also fine with that. Uh, but we'll stick around here for about five minutes. Uh, longer if we need to, but if not, we won't hold you guys. We do really appreciate you taking the time to come and get this education today. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Very informative. We look forward to working with you. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Like I said, we'll hang around for another couple minutes, uh, but we thank you for the opportunity. If you are here for yourself, that's great. If you know someone that needs help, we can we can also assist them. So again, we do really appreciate the relationship and the partnership that we're building. Thank you. You're welcome. And if you have no questions, you're welcome to sign off. Um, but like I said, we'll hang around for just a few minutes. Um, just one question. This is Alan Miller. How are you going to be answering the questions that were posed in the chat? So Nick already actually um, sent direct answers back. Um, it's possible he might have missed one um, because we did have a few questions. Right. I'm just asking to whom did he send the answers? It looks like he responded to everyone. Okay, but by email or? No, it's right in the chat feature. You should be able to go back to the chat feature and there should be a response there. Yeah, so, so Alan, right okay, I see it. That's it. Yeah, now I see it. Yeah, it's right next to share screen at the bottom. If no, you just... I have it up. Okay. Yeah, so the answers would be right. And did, were you able to find them, Alan? Yeah. Got okay. Both. Thanks. Okay, you're welcome. Great. Yeah, that the HSA ones, a, it's a it's a tricky one. You know, most people are not really aware of that. Um, you know, no carrier is gonna tell you that. It's actually someone who's gonna really be involved in the process of educating people. That's really in depth on how that works. Okay. All righty guys. Well, again, thank you very much. We're here to serve you guys and help you, assist you in any way that we can. We thank you for the time. We'll get this uh, uploaded here, um, hopefully by the end of business today for anybody else who might want to access it. Okay. Bye-bye.